Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up Facebook's dynamic creative ads. Hey, before we jump into the video, I wanna say welcome to everybody new and all of those of you who are returning. My name is Aaron Pearson. I'm one of the co-founders here at Bet Branding, and we've been helping frustrated store owners become impactful store owners since 2015 through tutorials, tactics, and strategies. We would love for you to support our channel. Just hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Alrighty then, so let's get started. Number one, create a CBO, which is a campaign budget optimization campaign. What that means is that you're controlling the budget for the whole campaign versus what was an ABO, which is an ad budget optimization. Really quickly, it just means that instead of controlling the ads that go to that particular audience, you're telling Facebook, you have control. Um, so you wanna go over here to create campaign, all right, make sure that you choose conversions. Big mistake that people make is going for store traffic or just traffic in general. General, Go towards a conversion campaign. Click continue. So set it up as a new campaign. Make sure that you turn on this campaign budget optimization. This on button should be there. Set your daily budget. And then one thing that I would tell you very quickly is make sure you don't touch anything else at that point. Don't touch, D don't touch. Stop, don't touch, because there's nothing else you need to change. A lot of people try to, there's so many buttons, so since there's a ton of buttons, I should push them all. You shouldn't. Okay, so step number two is targeting. Not specific, not general, just letting Facebook do its work, right? So it's, I've talked about this in previous videos and you may or may not know this, so I'm gonna explain it real quickly. Facebook is an OCPM platform, which means that it's an optimized platform for you, for your audience, for everybody who's on there. So when they pull out their phone, and I say phone, they could be on desktop. We still see a lot of people who are on desktop. When they pull out their phone or they're looking on their desktop, they have different experiences. We all go to different websites. You don't have to share with me what websites do you go to. So I don't wanna share with you what websites I go to. All right, they're all for everybody. Um, they're for you, they're specific for you. But what Facebook does know through tracking, and it is following you around everywhere, but just as a side note, you should be okay with them following you because it's just a personalized ad experience. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna get ads, it just means that the ads are better for you. So if you're looking at cell phone cases, you probably want ads about cell phone cases. That is what the OCPM platform allows you to do. So when you're setting up targeting, and we get here, Label it however you would like, right? So I'm gonna call this broad because I'm running to a broad audience, meaning I want Facebook to go and find people who they know have looked and have been to websites that I want people to retarget from. So if you're gonna look for shoes, I want Facebook to find other people who went to shoes websites so they can show them my shoe brand. Clothing, same thing, doesn't matter what the product is. The trick here though, is that you should narrow by a few things if you know your audience. If you don't, then leave it at 18 plus. But if you know that your audience is 25 years and older, then change it to 25, all right? I will want you to change that. Location, if you know that you're selling hats for people in Tennessee, why the heck would you go and run hat ads for somebody who lives in Florida, right? You wouldn't do that. So change the location. So that's one of the other things you would change. And then gender. All right, so if I'm selling women's clothing online, I'm probably not gonna target men. I don't wanna target men. But you're thinking, oh, but the husband may buy something for the wife. Well, that's really good thinking. Um, and a lot of good husbands are out there, but they're not searching around on websites for the women's clothing all day, okay? That's just not happening. So who buys women's clothing? Women buy women's clothing. So then I would change it to all, from all genders to women. All right, so by doing that, targets the audience a little bit more, but everything else, we're not gonna go do interest groups. We're not gonna go do all these other things. The reason why you don't do that is that Facebook creates interest groups based off of people who are searching for certain things or have taken certain actions. Well, guess what? Whether you liked a certain politician or didn't like a certain politician or, or loved them or whatever, turns out that if you engage with it, you're now in that group. So not only are you a part of that group, but you may actually have people you're targeting that hate it, right? So if somebody, if I'm targeting everybody who likes Nike, well, it turns out there could be this group of evangelists who just hate Nike and they're all aboard Adidas train. And because they're all aboard the Adidas train, they hate Nike, so they talk about them. They say Nike sucks, they don't like Nike. Nike, don't sue me. 
These things, like, if you try to run a mile on these things, you're probably gonna like blow out your knee. Nike, we love you. Um, they don't really care, right? They don't care about Nike, but they're part of this group and you're targeting them. Well, guess what? Now if you're targeting an ad towards somebody who doesn't like Nike saying, I wanna target people who are interested in Nike, you're gonna get some negative feedback. And what happens with negative feedback? When you get negative feedback on your ads, you get shown to less people, which means you're gonna pay more for your advertising. So just a quick tip, don't worry about the targeting too much. One thing you do wanna change, and one quick tip that a lot of people get wrong, so pay attention if you were falling asleep during that period of Nike and you love Nike, I do too. Um, pay attention right here. Seven days after clicking, change this. You don't care about seven days after clicking. Most people make a buying decision that same day. Doesn't mean that they weren't looking before, but Facebook's finding them at that particular stage. So if Christian's looking for a t-shirt, he may have done it for three weeks prior to this. But Facebook finds him today, and they say, hey, you were interested in other t-shirts. I'm gonna show you this really cool t-shirt. And guess what? He may buy today. He's not gonna wait another seven days because Facebook found him at the right time. And because they found him at the right time, you just want to look at a one day click. So what happens after they click? Unrelated to uh, Facebook, but super related to business, the only thing that you should be caring about is if I spend a dollar today, did I make $2 today? Did I spend a dollar today? Did I make $3 today? So I wanna see that if, in a one day click, did I get results today? And did I make money today? And if that's the case, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at that parameter only. I don't need to look at a seven day window because then your data is gonna be skewed. And what Facebook's gonna do is it's gonna attribute the sale to Facebook when if you watch any of our other videos, it could have happened through email. And then Facebook's gonna say, hey, oh, the email got sent three days later. Facebook's on a seven day click and guess what? Now you got two places reporting that they had the sale. If you have two places of reporting the sale, you can't track, did Facebook work or did email work? The answer is they both did, but you need to give the data to Facebook and you need to be able to test your results from that. So when you're targeting, leave it broad, focus off of age, gender, and location, and then choose a one day click. If you set that up correctly, you can leave it as manual placements or automatic placements, doesn't really matter. Um, you could just do the feeds completely up to you. So let Facebook do the targeting side of things. Number three here, adding in your creative, you can add up to 10 images or videos. And I would highly suggest that you do this, right? So if you had a chance to go play the lottery, I don't really play the lottery. But if you did play the lottery and you had 10 chances to put in tickets, and then you're like, ah, not screw that. I'm gonna do five chances because I like my odds. That's just basically what you're telling Facebook. So use all 10 options. If you can, if you can't, no worries, but I would use all 10 options. This gives you a higher chance of Facebook finding a winning combination for you. It also is gonna allow you to do five sets of text and five sets of headlines. And what Facebook's gonna do, it's gonna take image number one, text number one, text, num uh, text number three, text number four, text number five, and then headline number one, and new image number three, and it's gonna run into a crazy algorithm that nobody understands. And it's going to figure out the right audience at the right place at the right time with which type of creative. And if you've seen any of our other videos, the only way that you're going to win at Facebook long-term is with amazing creative. What this allows you to do is creative at scale and not have to spend, right, if you're CVS, if you're Nike, if you're a billion dollar company, cool, you're probably not watching this video, but shout out if you are, um, we would love to work with you. But if you're a smaller brand and you don't have $500,000 a day to spend on ads, you would have to spend too much money to actually do a correct split test and A-B test to make sure that this works. Well, Facebook's so smart, they created this dynamic creative ad, which you get access to, where you can literally go inside of here and set up 10 different options and combinations, and they're gonna find the winners for you. So, all right, we'll go here, we would select the page now that we're here in the ad level. Again, label the ad however you like, I would do, uh, I would label it as the dynamic creative ad. And then I would do a date range depending on when you're running this because dynamic creative is only really step one. We'll probably talk about step two a little bit later, but this is to test your creative to figure out which ads you're gonna pull into another combination of winning elements. So dynamic creative ads, super easy. Facebook dynamic creative ads, Facebook dynamic creative ads, Facebook dynamic creative ads, Facebook dynamic creative ads, Facebook dynamic creative ads. I bet you, can't do that. I challenge you, challenge. When you do this, 
click button here. All right, it's gonna give you options. Okay, then I wanna go here to the primary video. All right, so now that you have the dynamic creative, like I said, you go up here, you label it, whatever you'd like. This one is um, based off of collection. So it's literally a summer dress dynamic. You could do it by date range, completely up to you. Uh, for this particular brand, we're switching out products so often that we just labeled it as summer uh, and summer dresses. And so we're just constantly pulling in the winning elements and testing them. So you have it set up here, the format, you can do single images or videos. That's what I would suggest because if you do that, that's what you can, basically you can copy whatever winning elements were in one of the ads and move it over to another ad set. Again, probably a step two, this is gonna get you results as well, but that's like next level. Um, we'll talk about that in another video. So get to here where you can select images. Like I said, we have 10, you can have up to 10 images. Just literally click select images or select videos. We have seven of 10 running right now. I believe the client's actually gonna send us three more, uh, hopefully today. And all you need to do is drop in the images. Perfect, we have 10 of them. Text, we put in five different sites, uh, sets of text. We put in five different sets of headlines and we have them all going to one collection on their website. Now that's a trick too, is that if you're testing one particular product set or collection, you probably want a space for all of those to be in one part of your website. So if you're selling shoes, I probably wouldn't do a dynamic creative of the shoes and hats or shoes and t-shirts. Just do one for shoes, do one for t-shirts, do one for hats, because it's going to send them to one particular page on the website. And if you, that's kind of the only downfall is that there's only one link that they can send to. So. Just be aware of that as you're creating these things. After you've created these, um, one cool thing to do is uh, make sure that you're figuring out which ones are the winners or not winners, which is what we're gonna talk about here in a second. And if you figure out what the winners are or not the winners, you can switch them out. It's not gonna have to relearn. Dynamic Creative takes you out of the learning phase, which Facebook hates, does not like it. It just means it doesn't have enough data to make actionable results. It takes you out of the learning phase almost immediately. A lot of very uh, good things that can come out of the dynamic creative, but the long-term effects for it are, are super helpful because it's gonna help you start winning at the creative side with Facebook. If you're a clothing brand looking to scale through Facebook ads, you should check out the video. It's either around here, or here, or here, or here, but just click that video. It's gonna walk you through exactly how we were able to scale a clothing brand in the worst month for retail online. Okay, so this is the part you've been waiting for. Like cue some uh, drums, slow beat, slow clap. Do people do slow claps anymore? If not, they should, they bring it back. Setting up your dynamic creative is step one, two, and three. Step four, or more so a bonus tip, is that you need to figure out which ones are working or not working, right? So if you're inside of your ads manager. Typically you'd go here and you look at performance, but go to the left-hand side, you can scroll down to dynamic creative element. And I want you to look at your headline, your image, and the purpose of this video, we're gonna look at image. And you're saying, Aaron, the iOS 14, it, it won't let me see which images are working. Well, you can look at some insight here. So what Facebook is saying is, hey, we're not showing you much data, but what you can see is that these particular ads have spent more money. So this one right here, this top one has spent $604, the one below that 428, and then it just kind of drops below that, right? So we have majority of our spend happening in two elements. So that tells us that these two images probably doing okay. These ones that have spent $50 or $17, not gonna be as effective. And one other quick tip that you can see here is, okay, if it's by image, I'm gonna make a note of this particular image right here. Great. That image is probably doing well, but I don't know if I need to get rid of it yet. What I can do, dynamic creative, and go look at text. Which line of text is doing the best? Well, this is a clear winner. Must have trendy dresses for summer. Is spending $1,000. The other one, $256, $256. The other one didn't spend a dime, which means that, okay, here's a clear winner. And we're only testing three sets of text. So what I wanna do is throw in two new sets of text and get rid of the bottom two, because we have one clear winner. So I wanna test four more options to figure out which text is gonna do better. Because how do you lower the cost with Facebook ads? You don't change a bunch of stuff, you add in new creative and let that be the determining factor. 
And one last tip here is not only check the image or the text, check the headline. So clear winner here for us too. There's only three headlines going on. We should have five. So there's a change that we need to make there. Maybe the clients were testing out two new headlines, but there's a clear winner. New summer dresses available now. Spent $860, one of them didn't spend a dime. And then this one over here, shop summer dresses, spent $400. So we'll probably leave those two and then bring in three new elements. The goal is to just continue to get more efficient with your Facebook ads. And hopefully this will change, but previously you could actually see how many clicks and how much money was attributed to each one. And this is why you have to go a little bit deeper, but the data is still here for us to make very educated decisions on what's gonna work. Because Facebook's not gonna spend money unless it believes that it can take action and get a result. So very clearly you can see here, uh, this one went to 36,000 people, this went to 20,000 people. They spent, they went to one person on this one. So they don't feel very confident with that headline. So that is how you're gonna be able to test your creative and lower your cost. And see our goal here, or our, our purchase here is $27. Our, our focus would be to add a new creative to get that down to $25. It's not always spend more money to become more effective at ads. It's how can we be more efficient and then scale. That's how you grow online through Facebook. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this is a little bit longer video. I hope it was jam packed with some really good ear nuggets, really good things to listen to and see. What I wanna know from you is what kind of brand do you have? Are you a clothing brand? Do you sell hats? Do you sell desks? What kind of brand are you? Drop a comment down below. Maybe somebody will network with you and we wanna know so we can create the best type of content for you. And if you liked this video, make sure that you hit that like button because for every like that we get, it gives us a boost of endorphins and it helps make Franklin happy. He's our video guy. It helps make Christian happy. He's the other guy in these videos. It makes us all super happy and uh, we wanna be happy people to make great videos for you. Thank you guys again. See you guys on the next video. Bye now.